there's definitely been downsides to, to, to being a part of a football life and, and, and those kind of things are, it's that scrutiny, it's that 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 just yeah that intense scrutiny that you get the bullying at school and we all faced quite a lot of bullying my sister and I it would be more abusive my brothers it was physical at times um, and and you can't step away from that and I do worry about my my own children when they go to school uh, and then as you said as we got older and then into the workplace and, and certainly a, a, as a journalist as well and I would have to work alongside people who I know have have openly had a go at my dad, and, but but as Dad said, it's it's life, and it's we haven't known a different life, so we've just dealt with it, and because what comes with it is positives, and we've got a very close family because of the life that we've led. We've got some wonderful friends that we've made through football clubs, and we call it the football family because once you're in a football club, you, you form these unbreakable bonds, and so I've got numerous uncles that, that not many other people would have and numerous cousins, the kids that I've played with in the creche and even my kids went to the creche um, when Dad was at Collingwood and so they made some friends with, with some of those and they will at Carlton as well with some of the, the Carlton kids too. So you've, you've got, and then the, the wins, the wins are amazing and you celebrate them for, for a long time so there's some positives as well. Were you aware the kids were being bullied because of you? I, uh, not, not, as, not as harshly as I, I, I knew they would be. Um, I, I came out of one game one day, I'm not too sure it's even in the book, but, uh, and, and then it said, well, you better get to the, well, someone said, no, you better get to the hospital. So I race, ran up to the hospital, but I think I missed the press conference, ran to the hospital, and there's my son in, in, in traction, neck traction, laying down, down because he was a Malthouse. And that, that, that's not very nice. What, he's been attacked for being a Malthouse? Mm. Playing football. Playing football. Oh, playing footy. Sorry, playing football yep. on the ground. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, they tend to go harder at them because they're in the uh, 10 or 11, perhaps it might not even be that age. Uh, we may have been a couple of years old, uh, but whatever it was, that was highly unfortunate. And, but you can't, you can't, I don't think you can be restricted because you're, you're worrying about all those bits and pieces, because they are, they are very small parts of life. Christy, the time when this deal was done with Collingwood, just reading in the book, I can tell that you thought it was a pretty rough thing to do. Well, Dad discussed everything with us as, as he went along, because obviously by the time we're adults we can understand everything. So he, he told us what had um, been put to him. And I, I think what we thought at the time was that what we said to him was, are you going to be ready to stop coaching in, in two years? And he said, I, I don't think I will be. And we said, well, that's, that's the main point for us, is that when you sign this contract, you're going to have to stop coaching. You're going to have to hand it over. It didn't matter who he was handing it over to. It was that it was that you're going to have to stop coaching, and that's what we said. You know, perhaps if it was just a, a two-year contract, it's different. But when it's a, because then you might be able to renegotiate another further contract on top of that. But this was a two-year contract which had him ending yeah. as coach, and that was the main point with us because we said, do you really know that you're going to want to finish coaching in two years? Once again, talk about clubs being up front and straight usually around, particularly around the football department. Well, they weren't entirely straight with you, Colin, were they, in those days? Well, as most people were. Some of the club weren't? Oh, I, yeah, yeah, that'd be fair to say. I, I, there, was, there was a disloyalty in, in some aspects, and then I, uh, I suppose that is, to me, it's fundamental that, you know, in an organisation you have loyalty, and you must have loyalty, and you must have respect, and you, then you get on with making sure that it happens together. You can't have division. Once you start having a slight division, that's enough because there's already a little crack there, and that crack sometimes widens depending on, on results or or who you favour and so forth. So, yeah, it was a, it was a difficult. There's difficult times in all football clubs, but I always say football clubs are going to people, and the football department and the football players were outstanding. Was the prison? Was Eddie loyal to you? Um, I think at times. There were probably times when, uh, I, I look, I'll, I'll go back, and I don't know, again, whether this is in the book, I, I signed a contract when Eddie was in Sydney in his role at, as CEO, and uh, I always thought I had Eddie's great friendship, but he, he put it on the table, and it was, and it was then it become very, very clear, where it's, uh, he said, I'll, I'll re-sign you, but let me tell you, if there's no results, they're out, I'm a co Collingwood first, you're second. I thought, well, that's okay, that's long as I know that, and that's, that's the way he operated. Now, some people operate that way. See, I, I, I work the other way, that it's people first, the organisation comes second, because not that the organisation should ever be, you know, you're not flippant about it, but the organisation's made up of people. And I think the people first, and then they make the organisation. So that, that was a little bit of a, a wake-up call. So are you friendly with Eddie now? I haven't spoken to Ed for near on a year.
You can tint it. Um, well, I'm not too sure. I really, I, I don't, I, well, I won't be going out of my way because I, I just don't think, I think things have been, you know, I, I think behind the scenes there's a lot of stuff that's happened that I'm, I'm very ignorant of, of how this works and, and I, I just don't think that I need to, um, I've got enough good friends to have good friends and have good conversations and feel very good about the support that I get and what I give to people. What do you think about that, Kristen? Um, yeah, look, I, th I think what Dad's, yeah, what, what he's trying to say is that he, they had a very, very close friendship, um, he and Dad, and my mum and Carla, Maguire as well. And I think what happened is is that when um, business gets involved in that, sometimes friendships don't necessarily last. And I think that's what's happened. And, and Dad's not saying that he necessarily holds a grudge against Eddie or that he's, he, you know, if Eddie came over and said hello to him, that he's not going to go up and say, hi, Eddie, how are you? But what he's saying is, is that sometimes friendships last and sometimes they don't last. And sometimes business can come in between them. And in this instance, it seems like business may have come in between that friendship. He's not going to walk past Eddie in the street, but he's not necessarily going to ring him up and invite him for dinner.